Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about calcium deficiencies. Now, I put a link down below so you can see calcium excesses as well because so many people have too much calcium, it's locking up the soft tissues and creating all sorts of issues. So watch that one too, but if you're deficient in calcium, these are the symptoms. Number one, insomnia, specifically early morning insomnia. Let's say you get up an hour before the alarm clock, boom, you need some calcium. So calcium will allow you to go a little bit longer and that's because calcium is needed to make tryptophan to make melatonin. So it's not just about calcium in the muscle itself relaxing you, it's about your hormones, okay? Uh, muscle cramps, okay, so that's one common symptom. So I recommend um, calcium lactate or calcium citrate. Not a, not a, it's very easy to find. Brittle nails, tooth decay, bone loss, and red purple spots. They could be really small or they can be bigger. Why? Because calcium is involved in the clotting of blood, just like vitamin K is. Okay, then tetany, that's a little twitching right through in here. But many times it's not the calcium, it's your too alkaline and you're not able to transport the calcium and it becomes unavailable to you. So you get these little twitches, you know, different parts of your body, it's called tetany. Um, there's more symptoms, but these are the main ones. Pins and needle around the mouth and the lips or on your, your hands and your feet, which could also be a, uh, a diabetic symptom as well. So they can mimic each other. Okay, now what are the causes? Hypoparathyroidism. Now, not hypothyroidism, it's the parathyroid. There's, two, there's four little glands behind the thyroid. They're really tiny. And they're like the, the size of a, a seed of a, a rice, a grain of rice. And um, when it's low, it can actually affect the calcium. When it's high, it raises calcium and it'll steal it from the bone. Uh, kidney damage can cause a calcium deficiency. Um, calcium channel blockers, that's what you would take if you have high blood pressure, because that blocks calcium. Um, antiacids, which dry up all the acid in your stomach, giving you low stomach acids. You need a really acidic stomach to absorb minerals, specifically calcium. So that could be, you know, why you're deficient. Vomiting or diarrhea because you're losing fluids. Um, excessive magnesium. So let's say you're taking the uh, remedy called Calm, which is magnesium, and you're taking it, but you're not adding the calcium in there. That can create an imbalance because calcium and magnesium work together. Uh, then we have low vitamin D, right? Let's say, for example, you don't, it's not in your diet, or you're not getting the sun, or your gallbladder is missing, or you don't have enough bile because your gallbladder's congested, you can't absorb the fat soluble vitamins. So that's another common reason. Uh, we, low stomach acids and then alkalosis, which basically your pH of your blood is just overly too alkaline and that can come from adrenal stress and high cortisol, okay? The best foods for calcium would be grass-fed dairy, uh, cheese. I do a lot of cheese. Um, you get a lot of calcium from that. Greens, leafy greens, spinach, bok choy, kale is loaded with calcium, nuts, seeds, fish, sardines, and it's in a lot of other foods as well. If you're going to take a supplement, I would go for the calcium lactate. If you can't find that, go with the citrate, calcium citrate, but do not go for the calcium carbonate. That's like chewing on cement. Um, it's just chewing on this wall right here. It's just not going to be absorbed too well. Um, uh, it's like chewing on rocks, all right? So, share your comments below. Thanks for watching. All right, well, I found another reason why you should be doing healthy keto. Surprise! You know, we know healthy keto helps with weight loss and many different conditions. But when you do healthy keto and intermittent fasting, it can greatly help your absorption of nutrients. I mean, the fasting alone is going to decrease the need for the uh, requirements of nutrients. But what about healthy keto? What can that do for your nutrients? One of the biggest things it's going to do, it's going to start correcting insulin resistance. Whether you have diabetes, prediabetes or not, the majority of the population has insulin resistance. And that alone is going to block the absorption of many nutrients, okay? The one I'm going to talk about today is calcium, okay, to show you what's involved in absorbing calcium. It's, it goes way beyond just taking your one-a-day centrum silver that a lot of people are taking, or someone who's menopausal who's taking their um, calcium supplement, which is basically rocks. They're taking like one and a half 
grams of calcium per day, thinking that's going to help them with their calcium requirements. So let's kind of go through the list just with calcium. Number one, when you fix insulin resistance, okay, you're going to instantly start helping yourself absorb calcium. All right, number two, when you start to do fasting and stop eating grains, whole grains, and refined carbohydrates, you're going to start to heal the inside of your colon, reducing inflammation. And all of that is going to increase your absorption because malabsorption in your gut is a huge barrier in absorbing many nutrients, uh, zinc and definitely calcium. Now, I've talked a lot about vitamin D in other videos, especially as it relates to calcium. Vitamin D helps a person absorb calcium by 20 times, okay? So in other words, if you're deficient in vitamin D because you're not eating the right foods or taking the right supplements or whatever, your calcium is going to be 20 times less concentrated in your blood. And calcium is very, very essential, not just in your bones and your muscles, but from the function of cell-to-cell -cell communication. I've done a whole video on that. If you haven't seen that one, I put a link down below. It's pretty interesting. If you're on the wrong diet because you're not doing healthy keto, you're inevitably going to be consuming more phytates, especially in whole grains and other things like soy, and that's going to block calcium, zinc, iron, and other minerals. And then there are other foods that can actually block nutrients as well, like foods high in oxalates, spinach, chocolate, almonds block calcium. It doesn't help you if they're high in oxalates because that calcium is unavailable to you. Now, keto has moderate protein, okay? It's not high protein, it's moderate protein. There are some reports that show that when you actually do too much protein, that can deplete some of your calcium as well. It's not just about taking a nutrient, it's about absorbing the nutrient. And there's a lot of things that you can be doing and taking that can be not only blocking these nutrients, but causing these nutrients to be eliminated through your body. And then when you have hormonal imbalances, not just insulin being a problem, but also estrogen, that can influence calcium as well. And this is why like women that go through menopause that have an imbalance with estrogen uh, can be deficient in calcium. And it has nothing to do with taking calcium. It has to do with a hormonal imbalance that doesn't allow you to utilize calcium properly. And then we get to your stomach acid. If you don't have enough stomach acid, um, you're not going to absorb calcium too well. You're not going to absorb iron too well. You're not going to absorb magnesium too well. And so one of the cool things about healthy keto is it's going to naturally start clearing up conditions that can lead to low stomach acid and also include as part of it uh, sea salt, which is very necessary in building your stomach acid. And one more point, if you're not on healthy keto and you're doing a lot of refined carbohydrates, those refined carbohydrates are going to greatly increase the demand for many nutrients like vitamin B1, calcium. In fact, in the presence of glucose, your body will not be able to absorb vitamin C. It's going to absorb the glucose instead. Why? Because the chemistry in glucose and vitamin C are very, very similar. And so again, it's not just about taking nutrients. It's about getting them in your body and being absorbed. So anyway, if you're new to my channel and you want to know how to do healthy keto with intermittent fasting. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.